everyone. Um, as Vanessa said, I'm Molly. Um, I work at Mapbox. Um, here's a little of my contact information. Um, yeah, so um, I work on Mapbox GL software, which uses um, vector tiles to render maps on the user's computer, um, which allows tons of flexibility and a lot of speed and performance gains over traditional raster styles. Um, in addition to runtime styling is what we call it, which is basically dynamically changing map style properties on the fly based on any number of um, inputs into your application. So in May, we started rolling out um, something we call data-driven styling, which allows um, users to use data in their vector tile um, data layers or GeoJSON properties to um, style their um, maps. And um, before you needed to, um, if you wanted to do any sort of data visualization or um, have you know similar data but with different colors or sizes or things like that, you had to create an individual layer for every, um, every different appearance that you were looking for and data-driven styling um, is our solution to that problem. And so now you can style many, many different um, attributes all in, all in the same layer. Um, and on the official documentation side, we call these property functions because they um, are a function of the features property. And you can um, use the, the data's property and you can also style um, based on zoom level. So it's um, very flexible for map design and you can, um, you can design your map from you know, zoom level zero all the way down to 22 um, according to your data however um, you want to. And one of the major benefits of this is that for every layer that you add to your style in um, the Mapbox GL style spec, it takes a lot of overhead to render that layer and every time, every frame, it's rendering every single layer. So by reducing the number of layers you need, um, you end up getting better performance, faster maps, um, and happier users. Um, so this is what a property function looks like. It's um, structured like our style spec, which is JSON. So um, you just declare your properties and um, the corresponding style property that you um, would like that property to represent. So here in this example, if you're styling a temperature layer, um, if temperature is zero, your color will be red and, or blue, and if it's 100, it will be red, and uh, we automatically interpolate continuously between those things for continuous variables like temperature, but that is also totally flexible. You can use um, a categorical style which will um, bucket your properties into distinct layers and won't do any interpolation. You can do an interval style, which is similar, um, but will take you know, all values less than um, your interval that you declare and style them all the same way. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, you can do um, zoom functions as well. So you can, if you want to change the way your map looks at different zoom levels, that's, that's totally doable. So there are a lot of um, applications for this. The one that people think of most is data visualization, but um, it's also very useful for map design purposes as well. Um, if you've ever looked at Mapbox Streets, it's um, one of our pre-built styles. It has 186 layers, and um, 80 of those layers are road and bridge layers with the same source data from OpenStreetMap. Um, and so line property functions will allow us to dramatically scale that down um, and continue to make our styles more performant. Um, another map design feature that we just launched last week um, is extrusions, which the most common example of that is 3D buildings. Um, so instead of having to style all of your buildings with the same height, you can actually realistically um, style that, those buildings to their height that's encoded into OpenStreetMap. Um, and I'll just do a quick example of that, how you would implement that, just using an out-of-the-box Mapbox style. Is this showing up? Okay. Um, so here I have um, just an HTML file that links to Mapbox GL CDN. 
um, a couple style rules, and then I have my map access token and I instantiated a map um, just how you would. I, I'm centering on New York City at Zoom level 12. Um, building heights are only available at Zoom greater than 15, so um, I'm adding my, my building layer here. And this is all included in Mapbox streets and our um, data layer from OSM. Where available, building heights will be included in that data. So um, in order to style the building heights, um, I'll create some paint properties to tell the computer what to render. Um, and the main ones are um, fill extrude height. Um, and so the property we want the, the styling to be based on is just called height. Um, and the function type, um, we have several different types. As I mentioned before, there's um, continuous, interval, categorical, and also identity, which basically just returns the value that you put in. Um, so we want to use identity, just going to use the raw values right out of OpenStreetMap. And then um, that's, that's it. And I'll do um, fill extrude base as well if there are any floating polygons in there. Um, we want to cover those as well. Um, property, and then this, I believe, is min height. And again, we're going to do type identity. And I've just set this up so that when I click a button, it will pitch the map down so you can see it better and add this layer. And then um, we can remove the buildings with another click of the button. Um, oops. Remove layer. There we go. So let's see if that works. So now it should draw some 3D buildings. Oh, I didn't style it at all. <laughs> so it's just showing up black. Let's, let's give it a color. <laughs> um, I think this is a nice gray. And then we'll give it an opacity so it doesn't totally block out. Um, we'll say 0.6 opacity. Maybe that'll be a little better. Ta-da! So now we have our 3D buildings. Pretty easy. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's a, a huge value add for the data-driven styling, because otherwise we'd have to style them all at the same height. So we're really excited that that feature is launched and is available now. And we plan on adding um, extrusion abilities to all layer types. So this is a fill layer, but we want to be able to extrude circles, symbols, lines, um, and anything else that you can add to a Mapbox map, we want to be able to make it 3D just in case. <laughs> um, all right. So um, like I mentioned before, another application for this is data visualization. Um, we uh, are adding support for data-driven styling property functions um, slowly as we have the engineering resources to push them out. Um, and you can, if you're interested in trying this out, you can go to our style spec um, website. And we have these nice little tables here that show you whether or not data-driven styling is supported. So you can see in the fill layer, we have support for fill opacity, fill color, all that stuff. Um, some things that we are about to merge, we're waiting on um, me to do that, but <laughs> um, we will have line, line paint properties merged in in the next release. So um, we're slowly adding them in, and we're hoping to have full data-driven functionality for all those types um, soon. Um, so I'll do a little example. Oh, this is another 3D building demo that my coworker made. <laughs> I just thought it's a population density one. So this is sort of a 3D use case that is not related to building height. Um, and I just uh, zoomed it in on Denver. And he has block level um, population density from, from the Census Bureau. So um, yeah, you, can, you, can, you don't have to use building heights. You can use any data you want to visualize in 3D, whether or not that's useful. It's up for you to decide. <laughs> 
Um, so for data visualization here, I just have like the top 100 cities by population in the United States um, for a really simple example. Um, but we can apply some data-driven styling to those to make it more clear which cities have more people, things like that, um, just for a really simple example. So here I have the um, paint properties for the circles hard-coded, just like constant values like we, would ha like we had to do before data-driven styling was introduced. Um, but if we want to um, add in a variable radius for the population of the city, um, we can do that. And I have that um, down here. And this is an example of how you would do that dynamically. So I already created the layer up here, hard-coded everything. Um, and down here, I've got some functions attached to my buttons on the map that, um, that dynamically set the paint properties of these circles to um, different properties in the, in the data source. So for the, you can change that on the fly and you can change your scale on the fly as well if you have um, user inputs or different variables that you'll want to be changing. So um, I put this together last night and it's not the most dramatic example, but um, you can see I click the 2010 census button and the circle radius is, um, will size themselves according to the population stored in the point data. And then for 2015, I did the same thing, not, not too much of a visible change there, but, um, but uh, yeah, and you can also style the circle color. So if I wanted to um, create a color scale um, based on the population or based on any other property, um, you can do that easily as well because um, it's a supported property. So I'll um, do that right now. Um, let's do, It'll automatically make it a continuous function because um, this data is continuous. Um, but we can, we, let's put it in buckets just for fun. Um, so we'll do an interval type function. And then let's have our stops be like 100,000 people. Um, I have some, or actually, we, it'll choose the the next lowest bucket to put, like if you have 99,000 people, it'll put you in the zero bucket. If you have 100,001 people, it'll put you in the 100,000 bucket. So we'll make a zero bucket. Um, and I stole some colors from Color Brewer, Brewer earlier. Um, just quickly put these in. And then let's do nine million. All right. So let's see if that, oh, nope. Maybe I have a typo. <laughs> um, I'll cheat and copy some code that I did earlier. <laughs> Um, let's see. Yeah, so there it'll style it by size and by color. Um, and you could also change these values by zoom if you wanted to. Um, you just have to add zoom properties to those, to those, uh, to those data-driven style um, property functions. And all of these um, projects are open source. So, and we also have starter issue tags on GitHub. So if you would like to contribute, we are always um, so thrilled when people from the community contribute and we're happy to um, support you in um, merging a pull request or helping you squash a bug if you're interested. Um, so please check that out online. Um, and lastly, um, the slides will be on GitHub. And um, yeah, I used um, Tom McWright's Biggie to make the presentation. That's it. <laughs>